The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, Tigers. This is Jacob filling in for Stevie Perseverance Rhodes. He could not be with us today, but that's all right. Uh, let's hop into it. It's Friday. The market is rallying. Lululemon is up 12%. Insane, insane moves. We were looking at them last time I was on. Uh, we had the SPX up 1%, uh, pretty solid. Dow up about 1.6%. NQ up 0.84%. And then we got the Russell cooking at 23 well, How I want to start, well, also, I think it's important to always look at the dollar as well. We got that up 0.3. It's cooking at that 103 uh, kind of 104 level, and then the GDX is down 1.13% after, I think it had a nice bump up yesterday. Yes, it did. So, on some decent volume, too. We'll see what happens. Um, take a look at the 20-year real quick. Got a little bit of down pressure, but that's been cooking up for the past few days as well. So, very neat, very neat. I want to start looking at Amazon. They have some interesting news coming out today. So, you know, I, I kind of talk about some IT stuff every time I'm on. One of the things that they speak about, you know, in security in the IT field um, is multi-factor authentication, right? And uh, the top three you use for authentication, it's, it's what you have, it is uh, what you know, and, and what you are, okay? So what you have is going to be stuff like, uh, you know, a key code to get in somewhere, um, what you know is going to be you know, your traditional passwords and what you are, are things like biometrics, right? And my kind of like analysis of this, you know, what you are, <clears throat> at least security wise, uh, is, the, is the most uh, safe, I would say, right? It's pretty hard to, to uh, kind of mimic biometrics. So what Amazon is doing, and this is super interesting, is they are starting something called Amazon One. And what this does, we'll, we'll break into this a little bit, but essentially, you know, we all have unique uh, kind of patterns on our hands, our fingerprints are unique, um, and these are not visible to the normal eye um, or normal cameras at all. And the way that this is being rolled out um, is in Coors Field in Colorado. Shout out to all of our tigers out there. Um, and so essentially, they're going to allow you to verify your age to buy beers using this uh, <clears throat> excuse me, this device. Now, of course, you have to, like, set up uh, your, your identity prior, uh, but it's pretty cool. Let's crack into this a little bit. Amazon is new, somewhat unsurprising application for the palm scanning technology. Um, the company announced that its Amazon One scanner can now verify your age when used in places like bars, making it much more than just an alternate way to make payments. Amazon currently uses the Palm Scanner at its Go stores and some Whole Food locations, allowing customers to pay for their groceries by hovering their palms over the scanner in lieu of pulling out credit cards or cash. So that is uh, making obsolete uh, the what you have part of authentication. Amazon One with age verification is rolling out to Coors Field, expanding to additional establishments in the coming months. It's neat. I really do think, you know, we even have... Um, there are some companies that are rolling out, uh, uh, how do you call it, like a program called FIDO2, and this completely gets away um, from needing anything like a key code, needing anything like a password. It's just, it's safer, right? You could go different ways with it, like, you know, having robots know who you are and everything, but for, for the purposes of uh, security and commerce and enterprise, this is pretty revolutionary. Um, I, I do think and we'll probably see more of this as time goes on. So I don't know. I think that's uh, interesting, and I'm, I'm curious to see kind of how widespread this will become. I, I do see something like this really making an impact, and we could see uh, some positive growth with Amazon. Obviously, Amazon's already, like, in the, you know, quote-unquote, magnificent seven. <clears throat> These companies that are just driving, everything's rallying today. Um, but, you know, your, your big, like, 
Tesla, NVIDIA, obviously, Amazon, Microsoft, Meta. These guys are just driving the market uh, super high. So that's pretty interesting, I would say. Uh, and some not so uh, great news for Amazon. It turns out that someone working in their ring department uh, was using the ring cameras to spy on customers. And this is from the FTC. This is the privacy settlement. Uh, a former employee of Amazon.com's ring doorbell camera units uh, spied for months on female customers in 2017 with cameras placed in bedrooms and bathrooms. And this is from the Federal Trade Commission. Uh, it announced a $5.8 million settlement uh, with the company over privacy violations. Pretty nuts. I think, I don't know, I, I think last time, I don't know, I actually might have not been saying all that. I, I was talking with some friends, though. I, w I was looking online uh, because the place I'm moving to, I'd like to have a camera. Uh, but I, again, we were speaking about all of your data being sent out to some other device, right? Like the cloud is, is just someone else's server. And so where is that going? I think we were speaking about it with the Internet of Things. Um, but so I was looking into it. I was, you, you can set up all these kind of home labs at your house, right? And for marginally cheap, you know, you need to have storage and everything to, to save, every, uh, save all the footage and whatnot. But, you know, this is a perfect example. <clears throat> and I'm not saying this happens on a widespread. I'm not trying to spread any kind of, like, fear if you have a ring camera. It seems like it was a pretty... Uh, concentrated event here, but uh, Amazon also agreed to pay 25 million to settle allegations that it violated children's privacy rights when it failed to delete Alexa recordings at the request of parents and kept them longer than necessary, according to a court filing in federal court in Seattle. Uh, FTC is also probing Amazon.com's 1.7 billion deal to buy iRobot, uh, which was announced in August 22, uh, 2022. Uh, in Amazon's latest push into smart home devices. So, you know, here's the real thing. There is definitely a subset of people who are super concerned regarding uh, their privacy. And I think all of us on, you know, a superficial level are. These kind of smart home devices, I think, are gonna start being built in to homes in the future. Um, I think more and more people are just gonna opt for it. It's far easier to kind of delegate these kind of processes to larger companies. You'll see stuff like this continue to go on. Is it going to really impact Amazon in a major way? Is it going to really impact companies that are kind of in this IoT or smart home industry? Probably not, right? Uh, until there's like a larger shift in the public perception of, of, of security and privacy like that, um, we're not going to see any, any large change. I think Amazon, the main drive away here is that Amazon's products for these smart homes are gonna to continue to increase. Uh, Amazon's in a pretty stellar thing. When we, when we get back to it, I'll talk a little bit more about Amazon uh, potentially offering a very cheap nationwide cell phone service, right? You get these massive top guys, uh, that uh, top companies, just consolidating everything under them. <clears throat> and they're providing so many uh, different services, right? We even spoke about that with Apple. Uh, doing their Apple card, and I'll, again, I'll speak about that as well because I had to deal with Bank of America the other day. And I'm sitting there thinking, why, why would I do this? Bank of America savings 0.4 percent, and Apple's giving me 4.15. Well, there's a little bit of caveat to that, so we'll definitely get a little bit more into that when we get back, folks. Stay tuned. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. All right, so before we went on the break, uh, let's talk about some more things that Amazon is breaking into. They are in talks with Verizon, T-Mobile, and Dish to provide services via their networks. So Amazon is reportedly considering offering mobile connectivity to its customers alongside a U.S. Prime subscription. It's said uh, to have held negotiations with existing U.S. carriers, including Verizon, T-Mobile, Dish, and occasionally AT&T, about using their networks to offer mobile connectivity, uh, which would be available uh, to Prime subscribers, either as part of their existing subscription or for a nominal $10 a month fee. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty groundbreaking. Um, you know, I think they have Mint Mobile, as Ryan Reynolds' company, um, and that's pretty cheap as well. But really the name of the game is when, when you're going to have the service, you, you need this like vast connectivity, and I'm not sure Mint's is, is the best, um, but being able to essentially sit on, <clears throat> excuse me, sit on these massive companies, uh, you know, essentially their, their, their net is massive. And uh, as we keep seeing these larger big companies, like I was just speaking about, that have all of this money, um, they're definitely gonna be able to compete with some of these more, you know, traditional service companies, right? And we're gonna get cheaper or at least better services. So yeah, I think that's pretty interesting. And, and kind of more into that, excuse me, <clears throat> kind of more into that note um, of better services in these larger companies that have a bunch of, you know, cash and trying to figure out where to put it. Um, you know, we were speaking about Apple last time. And so the other day I, I had to get a different credit card um, and it was, you know, a fine process. The, the savings, you know, I, I'm, I'm through Bank of America. The savings through Bank of America, um, I think on average nationally are about 0.4%, okay? And last time we were speaking about Apple giving 4.15% on their savings if you, if you pumped your money into their wallet. Uh, that was backed by Goldman Sachs, pretty neat. Um, I, I also was speaking with uh, one of my buddies and Robinhood is doing the same thing. Now, Robinhood, that, that's a little bit shakier. I mean, you wanna keep all your money parked, um, you know, like in a, in, a, in a trading platform like that, probably not. But um, Apple's definitely has an appeal uh, to young folks, right? Even looking at Apple's um, ad for uh, the, oh, that's cool. <laughs> what just happened? Here, we'll just pop this over here instead. 
even looking at Apple's ad um, for their service, I mean, it is clearly geared towards young people. So the big issue, and you can kind of foresee this, even though it's with Goldman Sachs, they're, they're having some issues pulling out their money. And furthermore, too, I was, I was reading the kind of terms of service for Apple, and uh, they can change that APY at any point, which, there we go, that's what I wanted. They can change their APY at any point, and this is kind of what you're going to have to deal with. Younger folks don't really fully understand that. Um, but the big issue that they're running into is people aren't able to pull out their money. And we are behind. I'll get that up for you guys in a second. So, let's see here. Here we go. We'll go on this and I'll get that paywall out in a moment. As far as Apple's expanding more, we have uh, big plans to expand into retail business uh, in China, opening up 53 stores around the world uh, in the next four years. And so Apple Incorporated is working on plans to expand and revitalize its retail chain, aiming to push deeper into China and other parts of Asia while overhauling established locations in the U.S. and Europe. And yeah, they're not opening more in the U.S., and I think there were some closes um, in, in the West, uh, but, but they're still focusing very heavily on this. And through 2027, the iPhone maker is discussing opening 15 new stores uh, in the East, essentially. So again, we're taking a look at these big, quote unquote, magnificent seven. Um, and they just, you know, when, when the economic, quote unquote, winter comes, right? If you were storing enough of your acorns through the summer, which is during these really low interest rates, um, these companies are so large, they're able to um, just to basically exist. They, they have all this cash. These uh, smaller tech companies, you know, you, you model, you analyze tech companies based off of the discounted cash flow. This gets destroyed when your interest is so high. But when you're so large, like these companies are, and really the American economy has gone so tech, um, these guys stay. And, you know, it seems like even at the beginning of the last century, right? Um, you just had these singular people, and they had their hands in absolutely everything. And I think we're seeing kind of a shift like that again. So quite interesting <clears throat> to see what these guys are doing. Um, I think, again, we're going to see more stuff coming out of Meta as well. We'll see if Apple continues with their streaming uh, plans. I think that'd be pretty interesting. One of the things I like to talk about as well uh, is the jobs, right? And so we, what the Fed has been trying to do, and we say this every time, uh, in order to kind of get a hold on inflation, uh, they're trying to shoot for lower um, employment, uh, for wage decrease. And it seems like we have seen a wage decrease, but the labor market is still demanding more people. Um, even, in, even in St. Pete, you know, you, you walk down and uh, I would say a good majority of the restaurants that we have are looking for every position to be filled, expediter, cook, server, all these kind of jobs. Um, <clears throat> even like your, you know, your finance jobs, there's a bunch of, uh, there's a bunch of openings out there. And so it's interesting. And uh, in May, the U.S. economy, and this is from Financial Times, uh, defies expectations of slowdown and adds 339,000 jobs in May. Um, unemployment rate does climb to 3.7%, um, and then while wage growth cools. And so we can take a look here see here. Even though we have gotten a general cooling, and this is from the Labor Department, going in here, we do see a small uptick. Now, on the overall trend, we definitely are getting a decrease, right? But it seems like there's these battling kind of qualities within the market entirely. Um, and this is, I think, going to give the Fed pause into thinking, you know, are we going to continue to raise rates? I... It, with this kind of coming out, I mean, we are seeing wage depression, but we're also seeing more jobs getting added, especially in, uh, let me pull this up for you as well, in construction. And this was a little bit interesting uh, to me. Give me one moment to pull this up. Construction itself added 25,000 jobs, and 11,000 of them were in, uh, heavy in civil engineering. And these are, you know, buildings essentially, right? Even though mortgage rates are at 7%. And that's a little bit, I I'm curious as to really, you know, why that's pushing out like that. Uh, you would think that everything kind of decreases like that, but it's, it didn't. Um, healthcare providers themselves gained 7, uh, 75,000 jobs and, and professional and business services, um, a category that of course includes white collar jobs such as accountants, engineers, and architects. Uh, they added 64,000 positions. 
it's pretty, uh, it's, it's voodoo almost, right? Um, so the job gains uh, were broad-based. Uh, strong additions in professional sector, healthcare went over this. Um, however, with the headline payroll data, uh, which is based on responses from businesses, suggested an extremely hot job market, the BIS's survey of households presented more signs of cooling. Uh, the household survey showed that 310,000, uh, a 310,000 reduction <clears throat> in the number of people that are employed, uh, which pushed the jobless rate to 3.7%. So we have a lot of, you know, it's important to really dig into this, right? These headlines seem conflicting. I'm not sure the Fed really uh, has a, you know, a plan exactly what they're gonna do. Are they gonna maintain interest rates? Are they gonna lower them? Are they gonna increase them? Uh, we're in a pretty defining moment right now uh, in this market cycle. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, I, I have one last comment on the labor market, but before we do that, I want to bring this to your attention, all right? Tim Ord has a trading webinar series coming up. This is July, uh, excuse me, June 8th and June 15th. Um, on June 8th, uh, Tim is going to be going through um, the S&P 500, and that's looking at sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, a ton more. And then on uh, June 15th, obviously, he has gold coming in. And if there is anything, I don't think there's anything 
more interesting right now, at least for me in the market, than understanding kind of what's going on with gold. Um, he's going to be looking at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, all of that good stuff. And, and trust me, folks, you know, we're on the back end kind of setting this up, um, getting all the content developed, um, at least on the TFNN end, and kind of looking through, you know, what he's going to be talking about and kind of his strategy for it. I mean, it is super interesting. Seriously, folks, come over here and, and at least just check it out, right? I think, I think personally, it's going to be a huge hit. Um, I think um, anytime he comes on with Tom, right? I mean, it's, it's super interesting. So yeah, that's on the front page of TFNN.com, folks. Come over and check it out. I don't think you will be disappointed one bit. All right. So, so yeah, we have the labor market, kind of unemployment increasing a little bit, wages down. One of the bizarre things uh, that came out, and it just, you know, history almost repeats itself in some ways, um, is some lawmakers are actually uh, proposing to loosen child labor laws uh, to fill worker shortages. And so this is lawmakers in several states are embracing legislation to let children work in more hazardous occupations, longer hours on school nights, and in expanded roles, including serving alcohol in bars and restaurants as young as 14. All right, let's do this real quick. I'll pull it over for you. It's like, is a service industry like the new coal mines or something? Uh, the efforts to significantly roll back labor rules um, are largely led um, by Republican lawmakers to address worker shortages and in some cases run afoul of federal re regulations. This is from PBS. Child welfare advocates worry the measures represent a coordinated push to scale back hard-won protection for minors. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. The job market is one of the tightest since World War II uh, with the unemployment rate at 3.4. Of course, now we know that's at 3.7, uh, the lowest in 54 years. So that's super interesting. Of course, coming out of Ohio here, uh, Wisconsin as well. Um, you know, I would, it's just something to keep <laughs> like your tabs on. I, it's just, I, I did not expect to uh, read something like that today whatsoever. All right. One of the things I also enjoy talking about is uh, solar and kind of seeing what the renewable energy sector is like, right? I think we're going to see a big bump. Um, we're, we're seeing this massive uh, shift into the uh, quote unquote new age, right? So tech's huge. You got your chips, uh, your GPUs, your CPUs blowing up. Uh, so the next way that this kind of like technologization uh, is going to be in energy. So more money, and this is from oil price, more money will flow into solar than oil for the first time ever. And this is according, uh, according to the executive director of the IEA. So solar investments are expected to attract over, attract over one billion a day in 2023. Uh, since the energy crisis two years ago, many of the world's governments have doubled down on renewable energy since they view the sector as an ideal way to not only decarbonize, but also achieve energy security. And this is so big, especially with everything going on. We I drill this point every time, but everything going on um, in, uh, in the East, in Eurasia, right? Um, and it, for some reason, I guess, and this isn't extremely pertinent to America in some capacity, at least economics, but uh, it is in a security sense. Um, you know, your juggernaut of, of Europe, Germany, uh, is, is consistently refusing uh, to kind of do anything um, that, will, that will maintain, or at least rather achieve, some kind of energy independence. However, on the broader scale, uh, places like France and, and certainly America and e even, even the OPEC countries are moving heavily into renewable energy, which is smart on their part. So according to Faith Barol, uh, the IEA's executive director, solar investments are expected to attract over 1 billion a day in 2023, with over 1.7 trillion slated to flow clean energy technology such as EVs, renewables, and storage. Overall, the global investment in energy is projected to hit 2.8 trillion in the current year. Uh, Barol said that there is a growing gap between the investment in fossil fuel energy and investment in clean energy. Uh, clean energy is moving faster, much faster, obviously. Yeah, right, it's a nascent kind of uh, sector, and a lot of people are in on it. Uh, this is clear in the investment trends where clean technologies are pulling away from fossil fuels. Uh, for every dollar invested in fossil fuels, about 1.7 are now going into clean energy. And seriously, folks, you know, being in Florida, I have a, a, a buddy of mine, again, he's, I, I, I was walking in a neighborhood and I saw him and he was installing solar panels. And we, you know, this is, this is Florida, but um, I know it happens in other states all across the US. And the way it's going is, you know, he's installing solar panels. He's making a 
pretty good income doing this. And the way it works is the homeowner fronts up some cash, right? And then at some certain point in the cycle, uh, the government, and this is in Florida, um, will pay you back on it. it. It's and I know there's some like schemes like that, not schemes, but some programs like that running across the country. Um, and and really for for these smaller countries uh, that you know being dependent on something as you know um, as important as energy is is a, is a major issue. And again, we saw during COVID. Um, not having, you know, having everything spread out on such a global scale can sometimes result in some pretty bad um, situations. You know, for instance, it, it coming out that America um, produces like 98% of its pharmaceuticals um, offshore. So, you know, as this new world kind of situates itself, I, I think we're going to see uh, more countries become depend, uh, independent on uh, really key uh, different goods, essentially, right? And energy is certainly going to be one of them. Keep an eye out for it. I, you know, w w with the AI run that we had, this new tech, I, it, it's hard to get in right now because everything is so priced. Um, but I, I still don't think fully um, that that solar is is priced in yet. Uh, now, I don't think solar is as effective as other alternatives currently. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, but as time goes on, you know, I believe it, it will. And uh, there's such a concerted push um, by by the private and public um, as a whole. And so, you know, taking a look in um, to some of these different stocks and the sector in general, I, I think is going to be, um, it, it could prove to be quite uh, a good investment. Let's see here. Kind of on that same note, not solar, but this hyper tech um, voltage, which they're lightning nodes, right? And these essentially sit on a... Um, on a network, it's faster to uh, process Bitcoin payments, all these kind of things. Google Cloud um, is looking to expand the Lightning Network. Now, is it really just for getting Bitcoin? Not necessarily, um, but th this really helps with just communicating on the blockchain in the sense that it doesn't need, Lightning uh, Network itself doesn't need to see the whole blockchain, right? And so when you're doing this processing, it's more like, how can I do the most with the, uh, with the smallest amount of information I have? That's kind of what they're trying to achieve. This is pretty big for Google Cloud moving out. Um, and this is Lightning as a service, has partnered with Google Cloud uh, to expand its hosting capabilities and locations. And that's enabling customers to create Bitcoin and Lightning nodes globally, according to an announcement by Google Cloud. So we're now even seeing larger you know, companies. And at some point I, I would go into thinking, uh, go into discussing what I think um, the blockchain is gonna do. Uh, for enterprise across the world, but uh, we'll probably say that for another show. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. 
First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So yeah, we got the spy. That's that's cracking 427 right now. We we might see 430 today. And it's looking at the chart at least for the SPX. It's like what I have up here is Dollar General. We'll get to that in a second. But I'm just looking on the other screen here. I mean, it's like a. I think the the trend for the past few weeks has been like you get a sell off in the daytime and in the morning, and then you get a nice pop up at the later end of the day. We definitely got a reversal here, um, at least today on the chart. So we might see 430 today in the spy. Um, yeah, interesting change here. Anyways, some of the some of the big names got pretty smoked today. Uh, Dollar General. So th this was actually one of the fastest growing retailers by store count, which I which I know in in the general sense is moving away, but um, the, the discount stores, um, you know, it, it's it's better for them to kind of be uh, you know local and in person, right? So that's a little bit of a, a difference within that sector. Um, but yeah, you know, with, with these rising interest rates, um, usually people on the lower end of the, of the economic ladder, they kind of feel it the tightest, you know? We did this little bump up here but on nothing, right? This is, a, this is massive volume down. Um, and according to Dollar General, their clientele um, are really in spending. So uh, Dollar Store's uh, it's basically planning to cut back on planned store openings, including pop shelf format, uh, which primarily sells discretionary merchandise. Um, and seriously, you know, you go anywhere, I, you know, I, I speak mainly for Florida, but if you go, you know, anywhere outside of the coast, right, I guess save for like, you know, Orlando, but in some of the, some of the more rural um, areas, I mean, there's Dollar Generals everywhere. Those are your major ones. You have Deer, you have Dollar General, and, you know, some, you know, smaller grocery stores, something like that. These, these things are, are, are pretty, you know, placed in those areas. And these are the areas that get hit the hardest in these kind of economic downturns. Um, the Dollar General's core customers are reining in their spending amid a worse than expected macroeconomic backdrop, uh, leading the discounter to slash its full year outlook after dismal earnings report Thursday. Uh, shares of Dollar General plunged nearly 20% Thursday, closing at 161.86. Um, so we got a little bit of a bump right now, but um, after the retailer missed estimates on the top and bottom lines. So EPS was 2.34 versus 2.38, and then revenue was 9.3 billion versus 9.4 billion. It's a miss for sure. Uh, the company's reported net income uh, at the end of May 5th was 514 million, um, compared with 552 million a year earlier. Uh, same store sales, a key industry metric increased 1.6%, but the growth was half of the 3.8% jump that analysts had expected. Uh, the growth was driven by strength in consumables, but was offset by slowdowns in seasonal home and apparel categories, uh, which carry higher margins than food. In a new release, uh, the CEO said the macroeconomic environment has been more challenging than expected, particularly for our core consumer. And definitely, right, like the, the food over there, the, 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 just food in general, right, is expensive. Um, when you're already operating on like low disposable income, you know, 
what do you do? You, you don't have enough money to go buy other things, right? I, I have friends in this position as well, and it's insane to see. And it's also insane, not going on like a soapbox thing here, but, you know, it, it's not really clear that people in the lower economic rung were the ones who were like really driving this insane inflation, right? And they're the ones who get hit the hardest, right? They, they suffer a lot of the, and now of course you do see it in like some of the higher tech jobs as well that had complete uh, clearing of houses um, re regarding uh, some departments. But, um, you know, it's, it's the smaller guys who are not gonna be able to spend as much on, on the things that are kind of necessary. Um, and I was just reading an article um, a few weeks ago uh, to, to you all um, about how some of the wealthier people are, are starting a, uh, a spend, essentially, a spending spree. So, you know, as far as, like, as long as this kind of market continues, um, as long as wages continue to go down um, and prices stay sticky, um, some of these big margin items, you know, like, as they're saying, like apparel, are not going to see a bounce back. Um, so we'll see what Dollar General, how they kind of cope with this. This is obviously a huge volume drop of, of 20%. Um, so, I mean, it's up 1.63% today, uh, the whole market seems to be. Um, so, some people are looking at this maybe as a buying opportunity, but it's pretty minimal volume, at least right now, as we're saying this at 1147 Eastern. Um, so, we'll see what happens with that. The next company that uh, suffered pretty deeply is Sentinel-1. Um, again, massive, I mean, this is insane right here. Let's take a look, you know, just to get a better look at this drop. So Sentinel One's a cybersecurity company. Um, they had they just basically missed revenue. Okay, um, so we'll look at this. This is down 36% right now and continued to kind of go down today. It's, I mean, this is pretty huge. Um, the earnings per share were 15 versus 17. Revenue was 133 versus 136, and um, the Q that was for Q1, and then the Q2 uh, was 141 versus 151. There, it's interesting, right? Like among like IT security people, they love Sentinel One. Uh, this is used uh, primarily um, by companies uh, that, that are susceptible to ransomware attacks, where you know threat actors will lock down your computer, um, and, and people love it. Um, the professionals love it versus other uh, commercial malware, anti-malware. Um, the total revenue um, was increasing overall. Uh, from 133 to compared to uh, 78.3 million. Um, the total consumer count grew 43% to over 10,680 customers as of April 3rd. And uh, customers with ARR over 100,000 grew 61%. Uh, Dollar-based net revenue retention rate, uh, that remained above 125%. And customers with ARR over 100,000 and NRR reflect the adjustment uh, to the ARR described above. That I was just talking about. And the gap gross margin was 68% compared to 68% uh, compared to 65, and the non-gap gross was 75 compared to 68. Um, the operating margin was down 86 compared to 115%. So um, you know they did miss revenue, but they, they are adding more customers. Um, and again, I've always I've I've been on this campaign to say that uh, with the government having this massive push uh, for, for enterprise level companies, for private companies to actually take under you know, their responsibility, uh, their kind of cyber protection, um, in Sentinel-1 being so loved uh, by, by the industry itself, um, I'm not sure how, how, how long this will stay down, but the problem is, of course, this, was, this is down almost 40% on pretty immense volume. I mean, even looking at like the yearly, like we're not seeing volume like that. I mean, where, when are we ever seeing volume like that at all? Five years? Oh, 2020, okay, yeah, during the, the COVID. I mean, come on. This is, this is a pretty intense volume. So it'll be interesting to see how Sentinel uh, can recover uh, from this. So yeah, the, those two companies in particular are making headlines today um, for how much they were getting hit. So furthermore, regarding these kind of like retail investors, and, and Macy's is breaking into this kind of discount thing as well, mainly because they spend so much money um, they, they spend so much money trying to give discounts, essentially. Uh, so Macy's on Thursday cut annual sales and profit forecasts, uh, blaming an inflation-induced slowdown in demand for disrupting the department store chain's plan to rein in margin-crushing discounts. Uh, it has been offering to lure in customers, right? So generally, like, in that 
place in like retail and, and just kind of like consumer goods, anything that is is appealing essentially to the lower rung is just getting smacked. So folks, stay tuned. Oh, we're about to wrap up the show. Be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. All right, so we got the queue slipping down pretty heavily here. Um, we'll see what kind of plays out with that. Of course, we were just talking about uh, the SPX, so um, we'll see how that pans out. We got the Dow. Let's see here. We'll go to the DIA real quick. Kind of staying at the top here. So we'll see how that pans out a little bit as the day goes through. For the science lesson today that I always like going through, we're talking a lot about inflation. However, there are some folks who are a little bit more focused on inflammation. Haha. -ha. Low dose glyphosate, which is used as an herbicide, essentially in farming, um, exposure, this alters gut microbiota composition and modulates gut homeostasis. So the widespread use of glyphosate, a broad spectrum herbicide, uh, has resulted in significant uh, human exposure. And recent studies have challenged the notion that glyphosate is safe for humans. Uh, there was this famous thing where the, the company who, who produces glyphosate, um, one of the executives uh, was asked to drink water that had it in it, and he was dodging it. Um, although the link between disease states that glyphosate exposure is increasingly appreciated, the mechanistic links between glyphosate and its toxic effect on human health are poorly understood. Recent studies have suggested that glyphosate may cause toxicity through modulation of the gut biome, uh, microbiome. Uh, but evidence for glyphosate induced gut dysbiosis and its effects on host physiology at dose approximating the acceptable daily intake uh, is limited. 
essentially they uh, run it under a new test and have determined that it, it, it does modulate the homeostasis and increased pro-inflammatory pro T cells um, and then also markers that show gut inflammation. And folks, you remember this old adage, um, the old idiomatic expression that you think with your gut and in a lot of ways, this is actually pretty true, right? It, it really balances you out. Having a healthy gut, that is. Again, I know I run also moving into this, uh, my, my war on these marijuana stocks. Um, but in Nevada, 700, uh, excuse me, 75 million legal marijuana was sold and 635 million during the current fiscal year. This is huge. And it turns out too, and this is one of the things I was gonna bring up uh, for the signs, but I didn't. Uh, but smoking actually decreases uh, rates of fatty liver disease. And maybe that's because people are smoking instead of drinking. Um, but regardless, uh, there's there's uh, some positive to that. Folks, thank you so much for joining me. Stevie will be back Monday. Um, it was a pleasure being with you all. Have a great rest of your day.